you need to start getting your arms around that data and bringing it in and tightening the quality of it. It will never be perfect, but it, it better be really tight. For me, one of the really awesome things about ops is people take different approaches into the roles. We deal with similar issues yeah. sometimes, but we take different yeah. approaches as to how we deal with them. Yeah, um, sure. So how has your life impacted your philosophy in ops? Oh my goodness, what a big, big question that is. Um, is. Uh, I, I fixate <laughs> about the details um, and connecting the dots. That's what I do um all day long um to support my my customer and my customer is the sales uh rep sales manager sales director um and sales engineers um they are uh why i exist basically um from a uh, process standpoint from a systems and application standpoint um onboarding um if they're if i'm doing my job correctly and getting them up to speed sooner uh, more com uh, more knowledgeable so that when they're in front of their customers and prospects um, they feel confident and they can they can do what they need to do uh, to close business so um, that's uh, that's what I love to do I have sat in their chair I've carried the bag as they say I've sold so I understand and I bring that empathy to say I get it let me help you this is what we need to do and let's move on. So uh, I think that that helps bring a lot of credibility to to the role um, um, wherever I go. Yeah, that's superb. And this is why this interview is great because not everyone in ops has has sat in their shoes. Now. No, it's very interesting when you when you watch yeah. other uh, clips uh, from from your group and and just uh, uh, at large. Uh, everyone's road to this type of role is uh, is different. It's it's very interesting. Very interesting how people wind up and enjoy uh, uh, this type of activity. Very yeah. very much needed. Very underrated. Yeah, I agree. Um, and on that last point, actually, you know, changing now, but historically, there's there's probably been moments in time when sales ops people describe it as a backroom function, they describe it as not getting some of the recognition sometimes it, it deserves yeah. in a business. How do you reflect on how that's changed over the years? And what would you, the argument you would put forward as to why it's such a crucial function and should be involved in increasing numbers of strategic conversations and driving yeah. the business? Yeah, I mean, any, any conversation, uh, any opportunity a sales director will will have um, they've got so many data points coming at them they've got so many um, stimuli coming at them as far as uh, oh you know so and so popped up in the news or uh, we saw this latest economic uh, report that's come out what does that mean to uh, the Middle East or the Latin American market or that sort of stuff um, um, they don't have time for all that. They, they, they need help to sift through it. Anytime I grab um, five minutes to clarify maybe a procedural issue um, or um, uh, something to that effect, they very much value it. Getting a hold of them can be quite a challenge uh, with their calendars and uh, the activities they're, they're working on every day. But once you get a hold of them, you want it to be more than just, hey, here's the funnel report, what's going on with this and this. Uh, there's certainly an element of that, um, but uh, typically if you get a hold of them and you clarify something, it's all about communication, yeah. bottom line. It's all about communication and, and, and understanding and trust. Um, that's, uh, that's what uh, this role really, really, uh, this type of work uh, comes down to. Mm, absolutely. And you actually raise an important theme here and it's on the data. We think of it as an objective scientific thing, but actually it's also incredibly interpretive because people mm -hmm. can draw different lessons from data. Now, when you're having these conversations, <clears throat> you're finding rooms in people's brains. Talk to yeah. me about how you create an alignment and a shared understanding around data through different levels of the business, people with different priorities. Sure, sure. Um, 
what I find um, is the data in CRM as people have always, which is the main tool we use, um, and then whatever plugins you might have or um, additional workflows that you've programmed in your uh, platform, um, data is always assumed dirty, right? So uh, until you get to those higher uh, stages in your in your funnel um, early on it's very wide open it's got probably a lot of gaps in it um, but you need to start um, getting your arms around uh, that data and bringing it in and tightening the quality of it it will never be perfect um, but it, it uh, you know let's say they're in the final couple stages of an opportunity um, it better be really tight. Um, and there's a combination of, of programming that you can make it mandatory um, and improve the quality that way. Everybody uh, does some form of that. Uh, but there's also the, the, the reach out from uh, a, a role or an expert like myself where you say, hey, you know, this has got to get done. Um, and uh, what I find now is taking the data as you win and lose throughout the period and if you have you know a couple years of activity grabbing that 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 data and and doing some very basic simple analysis insights trending and then engaging that sales representative and or the sales engineer if if it if it's applicable and say hey team can I grab half an hour of your time? This is what I'm seeing. And I don't know if this is uh, something you've done before. I find in, in where I'm at today, there's there's been very little um, historical insights or trending um, of any type. So grabbing that information is very easy, very straightforward, exporting it, playing around with it, uh, looking at it, uh, A to Z, Z to A, um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like, oh, that sounds interesting. I don't know if it's relevant. I don't know if it's important. Um, and, and then you kind of engage them in a conversation. Um, they really value that because then somebody has has their back, as they say. Someone says, oh, okay, um, that's really interesting. I didn't know. It could be, you know, they're really strong in one sector and weak in another. But when they talk, they talk about <laughs> that particular sector versus the one versus the other one. So it's um, uh, it's very rewarding when you know uh, a light may not come fully on, but the dimmer goes up a little bit, and it's it's a journey. So it's interesting. I mean, what you're saying there is it's a matter of visibility. It's about sharing yeah. visibility with the salesperson. It's not necessarily that they're ignoring their weaknesses; they just don't have a sight of it. They don't have cycle for it. They don't have time. They, they, they're they kind of too busy with their head down, uh, chasing leads, working opportunities through the sales cycle, um, doing other kind of uh, activities in the region. And they're kind of going, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm moving through my year to quota, over quota, under quota, um, uh, you know, so stop, breathe, take a second. You're halfway through your year. What's you had a plan at the beginning of the year? Um, here's where we're at. What might we change uh, from a lead gen biz dev kind of perspective that might impact your second half or not? Um, so again, every business, every organization is different uh, in the cadence of that, uh, or if they if they do that at all. So everyone's so busy now. Um, they don't have time to do it. So someone needs to present that opportunity to them yeah. and educate and leverage. It's their data. It's their own information. So it's kind of like they, the, um, the old question of, well, I don't trust it. Well, it's your data. You put it in there. Um, uh, so I trust it enough to do this analysis um, and you're the author of it. So it's kind of that defense or argument goes away real, really, really, really quick. Um, but, uh, but engaging them in a, in a conversation um, and then leaving that conversation, um, it's interesting. Some 
many do something with it. A few do not. Um, but going through that exercise is very important. I like what you touched on. It's trust in the data. I suppose for me, um, it, it requires belief in that data is valuable. Now, the narrative is, and you can correct this, that is that sales teams are becoming increasingly data led. Is that something you agree with? Um, and on the flip side, you know, like, where are we heading? What kind of work do we need to do to get almost an army of sales ops, data led sales folks out there on floors? <laughs> I like your thinking. Um, uh, data is becoming, it's critical. Uh, and, and not only within the sales function, but in the, um, the other departments that feed into it or off of it, uh, finance. Uh, in our case, it could be uh, software engineering, looking early stages in the funnel for uh, indications of features and functions that our products don't have, but the market's asking for it. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll have a conversation with engineering and they'll say, I'd, I'd love to have these additional features in, in CRM. It's like, great. That sounds fantastic. Let's give me a list. Let me let me populate uh, CRM and educate the users and and away we go. Um, and uh, so downstream, we'll be able to, to use that. Um, it's taken probably 15 months for the organization to also be aware of the data set. Um, and the, the, the relative quality of that data set now relative to 15 months ago. Uh, so that's very rewarding. I've worked very hard to make sure through uh, data collection, cleansing, and some programming to make that data set as tight as possible. Um, so it's, it's a relatively small data set that we uh, manage today. It's about um, 3,300 accounts, about six, 700 opportunities at any one time. And it's, you know, uh, north of 200 million. It's not a very big funnel. Um, but I keep asking myself and challenging myself, well, what if we double? What do I do? Um, I can't, I, I can't keep doing what I'm doing uh, in certain areas manually, if you will. Uh, I need to automate that data. I need to, to import more data, I need to manage more data, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, data is very critical. Um, and, and the data set itself, uh, I find uh, currently three and four months out is the best I'm going to do. Six months is stretching it, 12 months out um, is a real, real struggle. Even though the business might need it 12 months out for planning and forecasting purposes, if I get three or four months of quality data, I'm thrilled. Um, and, and so that impacts the forward looking uh, trending and just insights. Yeah, and that last point is actually top of mind, I think, for everyone right now. Um, again, another common narrative 2020, it's so wayward. Whereas people right now are planning, they're strategizing for next year. And the story is so much of our data is now redundant. Um, is that one you agree with? And if so, where do we find our confidence and certainty from? Um, yeah, it, it's, I don't know if it's redundant. It, it's more just, uh, it's not relevant right now. Mm. Um, uh, it's, as I'm sure many businesses um in the latter first quarter, early second quarter, your your entire funnel got pushed. Is, is what happened to us? Budgets uh, at potential prospects um, locations vaporized. They went, you know, we we can't do this this year. The, the their revenue went uh, off a cliff, and therefore any projects that they would have potentially funded to buy our products went off that cliff with it. So basically we, we pushed um, many, many projects a year out. Mm -hmm. um, and, <laughs> and you're kind of going, okay, um, uh, it's come back, thankfully, um, uh, fairly uh, consistently over that, uh, the last two quarters. Um, and my, again, my early Q1, uh, first four or five months of, uh, of 2021 is looking 
rather uh, strong, um, but it looked like that a year ago. So um, it's uh, it uh, it's just been delayed or pushed is how I would say this uh, this year has gone. It's been an extraordinary year. Yeah. Now that's a really excellent technical and, and kind of business overview from it. But I'm always mindful that ops folks, it's it's an incredibly important, but also highly pressured position <clears throat> to provide that confidence, even when our surroundings can be chaotic. So as a human being, how have you responded to this? How have you responded to being in that kind of position? And how have you um, stayed strong? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it it's... Um... Uh, it's been a struggle um, for, as I'm sure everybody has uh, uh, had a rough year. I mean, uh, working remotely now versus in the office, um, you you were you would sometimes uh, confer with colleagues uh, at the next desk, next uh, uh, cubicle over, that type of thing, uh, at the uh, lunch table, whatever the case may be, and and kind of vent and. And say what do you think and that sort of stuff you can't do that now <laughs> so you're kind of um uh, left with your own thoughts a lot um and you kind of you know you just think it through you just take your time think it through do your best um uh, we're all you know struggling at, uh, uh in our own way um keep focused on the work um and uh and and, and model through yeah yeah, I think that's really human and excellent advice. Um, yeah. Quickly, how, how are you for times had another question and also to talk about cluster? Tons of time, tons of time. Awesome. Okay, so this is a question I love. Um, if you're in a room full of sales ops heroes, what would you <laughs> ask them? Uh, um, oh, that's a great question. Um, uh, I, what I'm what I'm starting to do is I'm starting to um, and it may be forced uh, because of uh, the situation this year is I'm, I'm watching a lot of uh, and attending a lot of uh, webinars um, and uh, kind of more forward looking what 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 should I be thinking about um, my day to day I, I, I have control over that but um, what are other organizations doing what are other um, service providers offering, uh, whether it's their software um, or um, product, existing products I have, what additional features or modules are coming that I'm kind of going, oh, okay, I might be able to take advantage of that. That's gonna cost me budget dollars. I got, I better, you know, let my leadership know, you know, I need X probably in 2022, uh, and here's my business case. Um, uh, I don't, I don't want to stand still, um, and uh, I want to be a little more proactive and planful um, and say, if I have this, I can do this either faster, more completely. Uh, I can feed finance uh, more relevant data uh, in advance. I can feed uh, demand planning um, stronger information for them to uh, work with our uh, manufacturing side and forecast better. You know, those types of things. Um, as I continue to learn the business I'm in today and the industry I'm in today, um, that's that's what I'm looking for. So I would be asking them, what are you, what are you thinking today, six months, 12 months, 24 months out? Yeah, that's phenomenal. I think actually that's the best use of collective brain power, isn't it? It's not what's happening it, right now, but what and, might And it's happen. hard to do. It's hard to do to take yourself out of your day-to-day, -day, right? Yeah. And, and your comfort and kind of go, wow, what do I do next? You know, because yeah. you kind of fix the things in front of you and then you kind of go, oh, okay. You, you, you want to sit back, but you don't want to sit back. Uh, you want to um, keep keep pushing yourself and the organization forward. Yeah, superb. Okay, Tom, um, that was a phenomenal interview, actually. What I particularly liked about it was, of course, like I said, the technical, the executable information, mm. um, but also like the, the step back and the honesty, which I think everyone could do with right now um mm. everyone is probably being in a position where they don't always feel super confident and that probably goes for anyone in any role and i think something yeah. that's quite empowering yeah. is to hear other people talk about how they manage that and, and you get caught up in it right like mm. you can get caught up in your own head too um and, and it's you just gotta stop you just gotta say look we're all doing our best um and uh are we better than 
three months ago, a year ago? Yes. Okay, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving forward. Um, you know, do we have a plan? Most don't. Um, you have something in your mind saying, look, this would be smart to connect those dots in, in my case, CRM, um, uh, making contracts available and visible at the account level. Never been done before. We're doing that now. Um, you know, um, in our case, you need to be technically trained to operate some of our equipment, having that at the account level so that the account manager has that 360 degree view and anyone who's coming into the into the platform uh, can say, oh, those 10 people got certified or trained. Some might be certified. And um, that has a shelf life of two years. So what are we doing two years or maybe 18 months from now to say to that organization and or individual, hey, it's coming up for renewal. That's revenue, right? So right now, it's um, fragmented and uh, disconnected uh, a lot of the times. So we're trying to bolt onto um, the platform at the account level, everything we can to tell the full story. Um, and it's, it's interesting when I, when I do demonstrations, I did a couple this week with new hires, um, even just giving them the, you know, the half hour little orientation of, of our platform. I'm kind of going, boy, we've done a lot. Of, we've done a lot of work. It's it's simple, but it's impactful. Um, and again, it's it's just taking our own data and presenting it. Um, so um, it's uh, you got to stop and kind of go, wait a second, we just did that, but we're going that way, mm. right? So it's uh, it's hard. It's very hard to do. Mm. Yeah, it is hard to do, and I actually think this is why. I, I think right now I do genuinely have a lot of respect for, for anyone really all levels of the business, particularly ops though. Um, I think if we can all make it through this year and make any kind of progress, I right. think we, we should genuinely be proud of ourselves. And I really like hearing success stories right now. Yeah. Um, any kind of project completed, any kind of progress made. Yeah. Think that's a... yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. It's like, you know, golf clap around for everybody right yeah 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 yeah. right now i think we all just need to cheer each other through 2020 and, and be proud of ourselves well it's honest. like you said you took a, a a bit of a break so you can get out of uh get out of your space so to speak uh your day-to-day -day just to kind of let your mind wander take yeah. a break uh get recharged and and come back at it so yeah. um it, we all need to do that con continually maybe that's a big lesson we'll all learn out of uh the last nine ten months is you know uh, we are strong. Uh, we are resilient. Yeah, there's going to be some, you know, uh, long patches of t time where it doesn't feel that way. Uh, you know, go for a walk, work out to, you know, uh, feed your soul and uh, you'll get through it.